Hi, I'm Nigel, developer of AudioSwift, and in this video, I want to show you some of the new features I've been working on for the next AudioSwift version 3. Um, there isn't an official release date, date yet, but I'm releasing a public beta version first for users that want to try these new features and implement them right away in their workflow. Uh, I have more ideas I want to add for AudioSwift 3, but this is what I have so far. Next December, AudioSwift celebrates five years since it was launched. Um, we have a diverse user base using the app, film and TV composers, sound designers for movies, games, um, virtual instruments developers, mobile and desktop producers, mixing engineers. Uh, we also have photographers using AudioSwift to edit photos and video professionals collaborating with the trackpad. We even have some users controlling lights systems in small venues via MIDI with a MacBook trackpad. Through the years, some of you have been reaching out um, with some feedback and suggestions of things you want, uh, you would like to see in AudioSwift. I've been taking notes and started working on, on them, plus adding a couple of things I personally want to, to, to add uh, to the app. Some will indeed be included in AudioSwift 3, and some will be uh, on hold for future updates. Uh, what we're going to see here is version 2.3.2 beta. I'll put a link in the description below to download the file. The minimum macOS requirement is still macOS 10.12 Sierra and up. I haven't had the chance to try out the upcoming Mac OS Ventura yet. Before installing this version, just as a precaution, please save your current settings by going to Preferences and then down on General Settings, click Save. Uh, here, uh, try to to save your your settings in a folder where you can remember. Also, uh, please copy your uh, go to about and copy your license key code in a place where if something goes wrong, um, the app starts crashing and we will need to go back to the previous version. Uh, we have this. Uh, safe. Uh, if, if this happened to you, please contact me at support at audiosafeapp.com. Okay, so let's see what's new in, audio, in, in this version. Probably one of the most requested features is this one. Now, AudioSafe doesn't require to be the key app on screen when it's activated. It still freezes the mouse pointer, but before it needed to become the key app on screen to avoid accidental clicks and dragging in other apps. Not anymore. And the good news is that now users can bypass AudioSwift keyboard shortcuts and continue using the DOS shortcuts. If you're one of those mobile producers that wanted to keep using the computer keyboard as a MIDI input while having the trackpad as an XY pad, now you can. It also means that users of Ableton Live, Cubase, Bitwit Studio, Studio One, and Digital Performer won't have the problem of the plugin window disappearing every time we call AudioSwift. This was an issue that avoided some potential buyers to actually get the app. If you know someone, please let them know that it's not an issue anymore and they can give AudioSwift a second try. Let me show you. Every time you click the AudioSwift console window or any of its window, AudioSwift becomes the key app on screen. If we activate AudioSwift, it will stay as the foreground app at this moment. All AudioSwift keyboard shortcuts are always working. And if you have a MacBook Pro with a touch bar, it will show you the AudioSwift buttons on the display. Let's turn off AudioSwift. 
on the other hand, if we click the DAW, the DAW now is the foreground app on screen. If we call Audio Swift, the DAW continues to be the key app on screen. The plugin windows won't disappear, and by default, all Audio Swift keyboard shortcuts are still active. To use the DAW shortcuts instead, go to Preferences, General tab, and enable Use DAW keyboard shortcuts when Audio Swift is on. We have two more options. To keep uh, the control modes shortcuts of Audio Swift, those are the keys from 1 to 5. And keep Banks Views Octave shortcuts, that are the keys from Z to period. Some of you may ask why this wasn't implemented since version 1. Well, it's not because I didn't want to. Uh, it's because I didn't find how to do it, actually, in code. It may look like a simple task to do, but because of how the multi-touch, the keyboard, the windows, and the pointer work inside the operating system, it wasn't quite simple to get a solution in code to actually do it. At least not for me because there's a lack of public Apple documentation on some specific things about this. Audio Swift is the first and only app I've ever made that basically uh, modifies a hardware device that wasn't designed to be a MIDI controller in the first place. Nevertheless, I finally got a solution for this issue, and well, here it is. A side note for users of better touch tools. If you are not familiar with Better Tool, it's a third-party app, you can see here, that I have recommended before for triggering shortcuts in your DAW with gestures on the trackpad. Take note that since the DAW can now be the key app on screen, you may accidentally trigger a shortcut when AudioSafe is on. To avoid this, you have three options. The first one is to, to click the console to keep AudioSwift as the foreground app, then call in AudioSwift. The second option is go to BetterTouch tool and disable temporarily the app. And the third option is to go to configuration in BetterTouch tool and just disable specific shortcut command that is causing conflicts. Let's talk about the user interfaces. First, the console window. Uh, I did small changes specifically in the slider and XY modes. As you can see, the labels and formats have uh, another tone. Um, there's some more space here between the, the parameters. Everything is gray out when all uses is off and they change color when it's on. There's a new shortcut. Press the letter H to open and close the console. Use Shift H to enable the console always on top. That's mean the this yellow star here. I deleted the option in the preferences window that says console always on top at startup because now it's redundant. Um, Audio Swift will always remember the last state of the yellow star uh, when it's launched again. Here, the trackpad window uh, also got a makeover. It follows the same color theme of the console. It apps also updates the labels you put in the console window for the controllers. If I, for example, type modulation, it will appear in the trackpad window also. I changed the, the shortcut to open and close the trackpad window. Use the key J to open and close it. And use Shift J to enable and disable the star or 
to make the window always on top. Before we used to have the the K, K key, but now it's J. Also, um, Odyssey will remember the state of this star when it's launched again. With this version, uh, you have the option to choose which window will appear when you call audio shift. Go to preferences general and select window to open. You have four options now. If you choose none, no window will appear. Use this option if you always work with the same controller mode and you don't require to see the console when you are using the trackpad. In the slider mode, I've added, as you can see, four more sliders for a total of 16 sliders. Now that Ableton Live, they have updated their macros from eight to 16, you can now have a quick access to these macros uh, using the trackpad with audio shift if you enable the instant mapping feature in Ableton Live. I have explained this before in a peer reviews you can see here, we can move the macros. I have played this in a previous tutorial and I'm gonna put the link in the description section below if you haven't read it. The sliders also have the option to send channel pressure messages. Before we could only send channel pressure via force touch of the trackpad. Now we have more control of it. You can decide uh, if you want to return to a default value or not. And it's also, if you go to the preferences tab of the slider, we also have the option to use relative pressure, which means it's gonna move the value from the first position of your finger, or you can use, you can disable and use absolute value which means wherever you put the finger on the slider, it's going to jump to that value. A lot of scenes presets come with the channel pressure already mapped to a parameter. If you don't own a key, a MIDI keyboard with channel pressure, now you can uh, send messages from the trackpad. This is global pressure, by the way, which means it will apply to all nodes at the same time. Okay, the, in, the, in the XY mode, we have view six, a new view which has four XY paths, independent XY paths. For the moment, we can only use uh, three fingers at the same time. So let me give you an example here. There's a new shortcut if you keep pressing the shift key. It will temporarily bypass the X axis and only the Y axis will move. Uh, the XY mode also has the channel pressure available here. You can be creative sending pressure and control chain messages in an XY configuration. Uh, let's talk about the trigger mode. The trigger mode in type keys or MPE also has a uh, channel pressure available. Go to preferences, trigger, and here we can enable pressure. In MPE, the channel pressure is indeed polyphonic per the channel. Pressure is applied per finger and every node has its own pressure messages. This is different from the pressure messages coming from the force touch, which are sent on channel one and affect all nodes. Again, here, pressing the shift key when you are playing uh, a key, uh, it will bypass the X axis. I also included um, the option to change how middle CC will be displayed on the, on the console window and trackpad. Uh, C3, 
Um, it's the Yamaha standard, C4 I think is Roland standard, and C5 is used does like um, FL Studio. I also changed the shortcuts for octaves and semitones. Now CV and NM are for octave and pressing shift CV, N and M will change by semitones. Before it was the other way around. The trackpad window has the option, if you right click, to show the notes only or show labels only or show both. Like if you change here to chords, you can see the the note and then the, the chord. Or if you change here to drums, you can see the note and the, let's say C1 is kick, D1 is snare and so on. So this is it. Um, this is what I have so far. There are some more things I'll be working in the coming weeks. Uh, please test it. If you find a bug, let me know. Send me your um, your Mac OS version, your DAW version, and a description of what happened uh, or what were you doing when the bug appeared, if there is a bug. Include, please, um, screenshots or short videos if necessary. You can contact me with your feedback through the email support at audiosifapp.com or comment in my YouTube channel, um, DM me uh, through Instagram, Facebook, or my Twitter accounts. So thanks a lot and see you next time.